Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot. and today we have a bit of a fun video for you. We're going to be taking a look at what happens when we take the A320 up to the top of the atmosphere into the higher flight levels and start dealing with Coffin Corner. This is a topic that comes up a lot and it's uh, a very interesting one so I'm looking forward to exploring it in the video with you today. We're going to look at what exactly Coffin Corner is, why it's a danger to aircraft, how we deal with it and how you know you're safe and not going to get into trouble with it when you're flying around as a passenger in these commercial jet aircraft. It's a big part of aviation, it's something that we are taught early on and it's applicable to pretty much any aircraft but in particular of course those that fly around at a Mach number or jet aircraft. It's less, it happens less uh, often in turboprops but still it's a feature of aviation that we have to understand and it's something that we will encounter as airline pilots every day. We will get closer and closer to it. So how do we manage that and what do we do about it? And what actually happens if we reach Coffin Corner? So in today's video, I'll be flying the Phoenix Simulations A320, but this will be applicable to any Airbus simulation you're using or indeed any jet aircraft that you're using or any sort of high performance aircraft uh, if you're going up into higher flight levels at Mach numbers. I am a real world Airbus pilot, but none of this is for any real world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. We've just taken off out of Cardiff with a full load of passengers and a lot of fuel, which will become relevant uh, shortly in the video. So let's get started and take a look at this uh, fascinating phenomenon of aviation. Before we do get started, I'd just like to remind you of our partnership with Apex Gaming PCs, where we have a line of custom 320 Simpilot PCs that you can also customize yourself on the website. If you do buy one, you'll be supporting the channel and you can get a 5% discount with the code 320 Simpilot. Here you are on the flight deck then, and we are climbing up to our initial cruising level of flight level 330. So why are we cruising at 330 and not higher? Obviously, in aviation and jet aircraft, we like to go basically as high as we can, usually. That's where jet aircraft are their most efficient. You'll notice as you climb, your current fuel flow, currently about 4 tonnes an hour, uh, that is going to continuously reduce uh, as you get higher and higher. The reason is the air is thinner as you go higher up, so you can't chuck as much fuel into it, it's just wasted, but the engines sort of reach the optimum area where they were designed to be operating, and you can get the optimum fuel flow. So it will reduce to just over, it'd be about 2.5 tonnes an hour, by the time you're in the cruise total fuel flow into the engines as a result we also get to go quicker because as we go higher the air is thinner so although you can see here our indicated airspeed is about 300 knots you'll notice as we climb it's starting to reduce that is because we cannot maintain a flight uh, a speed of 300 knots indicated airspeed as we go higher the reason for that is the Mach number starts to come into play so what's going on here well and this is all going to be relevant to coffin corner <laughs> as we get into the video as we climb, the air gets thinner and thinner, but that means we have to fly faster through the air. However, on the indicated airspeed, which is what we see on here, the number actually reduces. The reason is our true airspeed is up here. It's currently 454 knots. So you'll notice that we're flying through the air and therefore over the ground at a similar speed because there's not much uh, headwind. Uh, we're flying through the air at 450 knots, even though on our airspeed, we're only getting just under 300 knots. Why is that? Well, the air's thinner. So this air is obviously just hitting the front of the aircraft. It's the air that goes into the pitot tubes. These little tubes here. So the air hits these tubes and then they give us the reading for how, uh, how much pressure they're building up and they use that pressure to determine our airspeed. So there's less air up here, so that pressure is less, so our speed is less than it actually is. Whereas when you're down low, it's much thicker and uh, they start to merge together. So by the time you're at sea level, they're pretty much the same. Um, well, depending on the situation and the temperature and so on. But anyway, roughly, they get closer together as you're lower down. But as you climb, they get further apart. So we're actually moving through the air at 450 knots, uh, and well, our indicated speed is uh, back at 290 now. So what's the problem? Why can't we just keep accelerating? Why couldn't we just keep... Because lower down, we could fly at 330 knots on the indicated airspeed. So why can't we fly at 330 knots now that we're getting up above flight level 300? Well, that's all to do with the Mach number, which you can see displayed down here, currently at decimal uh, 768, roughly decimal 77. So what is the Mach number? It's a percentage of our speed compared to the speed of sound where we are. Speed of sound is not constant. There's lots of things that can uh, change this stuff uh, in our environmental conditions, but decimal 768 is the current Mach number we are flying at. So we are flying at 76.8% of the speed of sound. Right. Why can't we just keep accelerating back to 330 knots then? You'll probably work it out. This number is now the problem. We can't accelerate the aircraft past what's called its critical Mach number. So why not? 
Well, this is a subsonic aircraft. We have nice big, sh uh, relatively straight, they are swept, but uh, we have nice big wings sticking out there that hold up the aircraft that let us fly around efficiently in the climb and the descent and also stay in the cruise at a, uh, a sensible speed and efficiency. If you want to fly around supersonic, you need to have a special wing to do it. Obviously, we know they look very different. Fighter jets and Concorde do not look like an A320 for a reason. That wing is designed to fly above the speed of sound. However, our wing here is not. If we accelerate this wing past uh, its critical Mach number, then what's going to happen is a shockwave will form on the wing. A shockwave is a normal thing for flying supersonic. That's why you hear the big sonic booms from aircraft that do go supersonic. But it's uh, a normal thing. However, our wing is not designed for it. And if we get a shockwave, what's going to happen is the area behind the shockwave will not be producing lift on the wing as we want it to. It distorts all of the aerodynamics. I don't know much about supersonic flight. I've never done it. Uh, and it's unlikely I will. But uh, it's something that I... I um, can say uh, loosely from the training we get in initial flight training and indeed we don't want to be going supersonic with this wing it's going to essentially lose lift so why is this number reducing as we climb well what happens is as you climb at a, um, as your airspeed if you were to hold a continuous airspeed as you climb your Mach number will actually increase this is to do with temperature and the way the air is reducing in pressure as you climb so as we're climbing up higher and higher, our indicated airspeed has to start coming back slightly and the Mach number will become limiting as it has here. So you can see here, this red bar here. So this red bar is to the maximum speed because of the Mach that we would reach as we go through it. Now there are safety margins involved. You wouldn't immediately have a problem just hitting slightly into it, but that's what it is. Um, so we cannot accelerate the aircraft because our Mach number would increase due to our true airspeed increasing and we're going too fast through the air and we would start to form shockwaves on those lovely big wings that we use to fly around up here. They're designed for efficiency at subsonic speeds. They're not designed to fly twice the speed of sound. So, on the other end of the speed scale, you can start to see it's crept up, hasn't it? We're now at 240 knot clean speed, um, or the green dot speed. So what's happened here? Why is this number increased? Well, as we've gone up and the air's got thinner, our low airspeed that we can go to has also risen. Now, it's not risen much, and it's, there'll be all sorts of... Um, different uh, flight warning uh, the Airbus will, will decide things and different factors and so on but it has risen it nonetheless so now our low speed is only 240 knots so we're sitting here at 330 and those are the two speeds we can see so going too fast we'll accelerate and get a shockwave on the wing going too slow it's just the same as it is low level if we go too slow the aircraft cannot produce lift as it wants to and we'll actually stall the aircraft we'll stall the wing which means we'll no longer get lift off of the wing so in a weird way both of these will result in the same thing a loss of lift or the airplane will stop flying essentially so we don't want to go into either of those areas now what is coughing corner well you may have worked it out as we climb this speed at the bottom is starting to is creeping up and crucially the speed at the top is coming down so if you keep climbing you're going to eventually find a point where these two meet and that is your coffin corner so that is a where you're a bit trapped you can't accelerate you can't decelerate it's not safe to do either which is a bit of an awkward situation to be in an airplane we know speed is obviously very important but it's nice to have a bit of a range why can't we just fly around at coffin corner for example what if we wanted to fly here uh, or what if we were here and the red bar was just above us and the yellow bar was just below us why is that a problem well we need to have a bit of a safety margin this low speed here is fine as it is but if we were to increase the loading on the wing then that's actually going to bring alpha protection through the bottom because you're putting yourself at a higher risk of stall you can stall at any speed it's an angle of attack issue so if we increase the angle of attack which is quite easy to do in this thin air up here because it's much thinner out there um, we could find ourselves stalling. So we need a margin, hence we have a, a gap and we want to fly in the gap. Likewise for the overspeed, what if there's some turbulence and we get a bump and we go through into it? We don't want to have a risk of getting a shockwave form on the wing and then the airplane uh, get into difficulty. So we have to fly around with a bit of a margin. So how do we find out what uh, where we want to go in the a A320? Well, you can see here, cruising at 330, autumn is actually 330, recommended max 365. So these are all low. We all know that the Airbus can climb and cruise at 39,000 feet, but I can't do it right now. Why is that? Well, the recommended max is calculated by the Airbus based on the weight of the aircraft and the temperature outside, which we can see over here. It's currently a static air temperature minus 52, which is actually two degrees colder than standard atmosphere, so it's quite, quite good conditions. But we are very heavy. We are 71 tons almost because, of course, it's a long flight. We've got nine tons of fuel still on board. Um, I don't even know if that's going to be. Yeah, that will be enough when we get there. Um, nine tons of fuel still on board and a huge zero fuel weight. I've put on a load of passengers. Zero fuel weight was over 60 tons on this flight. 
So that is typical situation for a longer flight. And this is why you get step climbs. And long-haul aircraft will do this as well, or even more so than short-haul, where they will get uh, to initial climb level, they'll stay here for a bit, and then they'll climb a bit higher. Um, because, of course, we do still want to go higher. It's not efficient to be here. We're having to burn more fuel than we would if we were higher up. But we just can't go there because of our, our limitations. This is more of a wing limitation uh, than anything, uh, or the design of the aircraft. Plus, obviously, the weight. The weight being a, a big, big, big factor on it. So, Recommended Max does not tell us um, where our coffin corner is, but it does give us some idea of the performance margins that we're running into. Um, but primarily, coffin corner is, like I say, this upper Mach number limit moving down to meet us uh, and meet the bottom limit as well. Because we're so heavy, this bottom limit is higher than it would be otherwise. Uh, and what this recommended max is actually based on is uh, a bit of a 0.3 G buffet margin, if you're interested, um, and also a cruising level flight at maximum cruise thrust. So we don't actually climb to recommended max. Uh, I wouldn't want to climb to flightable 360, even with six, maybe 600 foot margins, okay. But uh, if this was exactly saying exactly 360, then I would not climb to 360. Because when you're there, you'll only have a 0.3 G margin and the engines will have to stay at cruise thrust to maintain um, the level max cruise thrust so it's not ideal uh, and most pilots won't typically sit at the recommended maximum if it's totally smooth air and air traffic insists or really need it uh, then it might be an option but that's what it is so it does have a margin it is safe to go to but it's not very comfortable because what will happen is you'll sit there worrying any turbulence and you'll, you'll be hitting one of these red bars so this optimum will gradually increase as we go along and the fuel burn will uh, make the aircraft lighter we're going to burn nine tons of fuel so we're going to get much lighter we're going to go down all the way down to about 62 tons by the time we land uh, and therefore the optimum will increase and the recommended max will increase with it hence we'll be able to go to it so typically we aim to be around the optimum uh, most likely it's also worth noting on the a321 aircraft which has a higher wing loading it's the same wing remember or very similar but with a, uh, a larger heavier fuselage that often has lower recommended maximums initially and it would also um, I, most pilots will give it a wider margin on the recommended maximum as well um, even if uh, even if it looks like it's okay maybe it may be about a thousand feet if you can but that is a personal thing not a procedure so now let's climb up to our recommended maximum obviously that's what we have to do so we're going up to 360 so let's come open climb we've got 360 armed so we're going to see what the performance is like as we get up there and then we're going to keep climbing and see if we can met, get a coffin corner to meet up What's going on here is essentially a risk analysis. We as pilots are constantly risk analyzing it. So there is a school of thought that we are essentially, that's all we do in our job. Um, but what we're doing is deciding, are the conditions right to climb up higher? Is it better? Because we're constantly balancing um, all the different needs of the aircraft and of course safety being the ultimate priority all the time. So if you're not sure or you're concerned, then you'll just go a bit lower where it's a bit safer, but you will burn a little bit of extra fuel. So it's all about bringing all these things together into a sensible decision. And as I say, that usually means trying to fly around the optimum. You can go above the optimum, but we certainly can't go above the recommended maximum. Uh, even though it says recommended, we wouldn't go above that. Uh, and like I say, very rare to even get there. Most people will give it a, a wide berth because, of course, we don't want to find ourselves overspeeding the aircraft, getting shockwaves or getting into a low speed. It's unlikely you'd get an immediate shockwave or anything too drastic, though. It's not too, too exciting, I would imagine. But this is not an area of flight dynamics that I am very uh, expert on, uh, nor am I an expert on any of them. It's a, a topic that Airbus have come to a decision on, and this is the information we get given, and we ba make our risk analysis based on that. As you can see, we're now getting up into the... Uh Nick closer to 360 still looking pretty acceptable so I'm actually going to leave the aircraft climbing let's go above our recommended and go to 370 and just see what happens um, I'm expecting just for the margin to get closer but still be acceptable as I said in smooth air it's it's not too big of an issue to reach a recommended maximum it's when it's rough that we'd be concerned although that looks like quite a big margin in some cases it's only 10 knots either way um, 10 knots is quite a big change but nevertheless if you're in any sort of jet stream situation and you're flying around for example we've got 54 knots of crosswind here so what if that wind were to change direction as we pass through the jet stream or disappear um, you know this is the sort of things that can easily give you a 10 knot change so you're getting tighter now and you've seen that our low speed has crept up slightly we also run into other issues, which is uh, when you get too high, using the speed brakes in the real Airbus will increase the VLS. So that will actually come up like that. There you go, it works in the Phoenix as well. So as you deploy the speed brakes, you get a huge increase in VLS immediately. So if you overspeed 
and you want to deploy the speed brakes to slow down, you'll find that you're immediately getting into a low speed event. And you'll see there that I've actually drained it of performance. Now, I think this is probably slightly optimistic, um, oh, slightly optimistic performance here. 500 feet per minute for the last 1,000 feet, even though we're going up to our recommended max. Maybe, maybe it would do that. It's not something we do too often. But as you can see, these numbers are getting closer and closer now, and it's uh, getting tighter and tighter. So actually, let's put in 390, and just we'll just see what happens. In the guidance for recommended maximum, um, it's supposed to give us a minimum rate of climb at max climb thrust. Max climb thrust is here, climb. That's what it's rated to. Um, it's interesting to see them not sitting quite there. But um, yeah, so uh, that is all we're going to get out of the engines, 86.2. Uh, you might think, oh, well, I wonder if maybe to get the airplane to climb a bit better why don't we try and add a bit more so if i go to mct max continuous thrust you'll notice there is essentially no change what about toga so there you go when you reach these higher levels the engines are where they're designed to be but they run out of excess performance the airbus is a very powerful airplane and flying it around at 6,000 feet is a total joy but it is not uh up here it's a different airplane altogether and that's something that has obviously been a, an issue in aviation in the past that flying aircraft at these flight levels is not like the air flying that you learn to do when you're you're training or what you do when you typically handle the aircraft which we normally do in the lower levels it's a very different beast up here you'll notice now that we're running out of steam so it's holding 500 feet per minute but actually reducing on the speed uh, which I'm, I'm not entirely sure is accurate I would expect it to hold the speed a bit better I'm going to try and select speed and see if I can force it to reduce that rate of climb. But it seems to want to do a minimum of 500, which I don't believe the real aircraft doesn't. The real aircraft would actually level off if it wants to. So what I'm going to do is reduce the vertical speed myself. We'll do 200 feet per minute. But this is an easy situation to get yourself into um, at these high levels. We've now run out of puff, really. You get into a low speed and you start finding that you're getting more drag the slower you go. Um, so the nose is so high, the angle of attack is so high that the uh, aircraft is starting to produce drag as it slows down, which is obviously a very bad place to be. So it can be very hard to get the aircraft to re-accelerate. What you can do for that is uh, actually level off for a little bit. That's your best bet. So I'm going to go to vertical speed zero. We've got climb thrust sitting there, 86% N1 now. And we'll let the airplane go. And remember, we are heavy. We're 70 tons. We are cruising flight level above max flight level. That's the message you'll get um, when you enter the wrong level that's above the recommended max. But there we go. We'll keep trying in the name of science. So it's just not going to accelerate. This is very good. This is exactly what you'd expect from the real aircraft. It, it would not um, manage. The only thing I would say is that open climb, it should have kept the speed and leveled off because the, the Airbus will do that. It shouldn't descend in open climb, but it might level off for a bit while it's fiddling around up here. Let's do 200 feet a minute. And now you'll see we've had to come all the way back to our indicator speed of only about 242 knots so this only increased a little bit but our maximum has dropped all the way down now and it's 260 because we're actually doing Mach decimal 76 so for context that's our turbulence penetration speed so if we think we're going to encounter severe turbulence we need to be doing decimal 76 in the 320 so we're already there we can't go any slower um, we've just run out, running out of options here we can't use the speed brakes anymore and um, you don't use them in the cruise normally anyway but they are totally out of use um, yeah this is a pretty tight situation and if you were in turbulence this would be very uncomfortable indeed it wouldn't be uncomfortable for you in the back but it would be something the pilots would uh, have a lot of you'd be just laser focused on the speed the whole time so it wouldn't be much fun and like i say this is not a situation we'd get into because this is above the recommended max this is just uh, showing you what happens as you climb i'll also while we're here disconnect the autopilot now luckily the airbus unlike a lot of aircraft will handle the same at these levels in some respects in that the side stick still commands g it still commands roll so i can push it around as i see fit and it will respond in a similar way however you'll notice look at that one degree pitch change if that and the virtual speed just came on straight away crucially if i pull the side stick now it'll try and nose up in the same way it would lower down but what we'll get is a low speed event very quickly i would imagine even faster than that this alpha protection would come straight up to meet you um, and if I go full side stick there straight into a low speed oof very very unpleasant you do not want to see that so let's get that nose back down <laughs> and we're going to be here a while trying to recover that energy here we are then essentially in coffin corner we've run out of energy the airplane is really not happy trying to climb we've run out of excess thrust so the engines are now sitting at the maximum they can give us and we are just leveling out 38,600 feet speeds reducing gradually so this is as far as we're going to get it 
but yeah essentially we're in coffin corner but as it turns out we've run out of performance we got before we got there i really couldn't tell you what would happen first in the aircraft uh, it, i would imagine running out of performance is a likely situation but this is not a position we put the aircraft in obviously uh for very clear reasons the first officer is very unhappy about the situation as well as you can hear <laughs> i'm going to try just reducing the weight live as you can see by dropping that all the way down the VLS immediately disappears beneath us so this is what gives us the ability to uh, climb higher up it's taking that weight off increases the margin we have to fly with so then we can again keep trying to climb but we will eventually run out of performance as we get higher so there we go that's all for today's video I hope it's been interesting for you this is as I say something that I've been asked a lot during streams and I can see why it's a very interesting part of aviation and uh, modern jet liners so hopefully this has cleared it up a bit for you and uh, now you'll know what you're looking at as you climb up and uh, why those those bars are coming together and what is meant by the phrase coffin corner there'll be plenty more in-depth videos like this where we go through the airbus and some of the finer details of flying it as well as plenty of live streams and videos so do please subscribe if you'd like to see more that's all then so thank you very much for watching we'll see you again in another of those videos or live streams bye bye